Okay then, right, well, as I said, hi, welcome everybody here. Thank you for joining us for our webinar, the Footwear and Apparel, Apparel um, Factory Chemical uh, Management uh, Seminar. Um, my name is uh, Claire Franco. I have been with Tufts now for three years and I am a um, technical um, account manager uh, based here in the UK. Um, now, I deal with a lot of different product types, um, but we you know one of the key things that we know that keeps increases year on year, um, especially with a lot of the, our international markets as well, is uh, chemical management. And what we'd like to do here is probably start to introduce the chemical management system. You probably know and uh, probably agree that it's such a vast topic and it does start with how chemicals are purchased and how they're stored in your manufacturing plant, in your factory, um, and also how things are implemented within that factory, how are they stored? Do they have the procedures in place to ensure that everything is safe, that if there is um, a leakage or an emergency incident, they know what to do, how to clean that up, how to cope with that one. And also it's just sort of like understanding um, and making sure you're using appropriate substances and chemicals throughout the whole of the manufacturing substance um, process. And that includes, um, you know, for machinery as well, when you're cleaning your machinery, when you're maintaining your machinery, or just keeping it lubricated um, as well. So there's a lot that uh, goes into chemical management. And we do all of this before we even start to think about what tests we may need to conduct depending on where we're selling our product. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Our presenter today is uh, Miss Jane Lee. Now, Jane is one of our senior engineers in our Center of Excellence um, in China, uh, working on the soft lines uh, department. Now, Jane, as we can see, is responsible for all technical support and new business development in regards to soft line product and testing uh, and certification. She is a technical certifier, she's a report reviewer, and she's also a factory inspector. So Jane's been involved in a lot of on the ground work as well as uh, research um, and training. Jane is one of our accredited ZGHC trainers and has been in the, uh, the toy, um, sorry, not the toy, the test and inspection and certification industry for 16 years now. So she has quite a bit of um, experience. Right, I'm going to turn off my video now and I'm going to pass you on to Jane to start our presentation. Thank you very much, Jane. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jane. It is my honor to be the speaker today. Here is the summary of our presentation. We will have an overview of the footwear and apparel factory chemical management. And then we will introduce two important modules of the chemical management system. They are the risk assessment of chemicals and the chemical transferring and storage precautions. In the end, we will have a Q&A section. Now let's start the part one. To overview the chemical management of apparel and footwear factories, we may ask three questions. Why do we manage chemicals? What are the benefits of chemical management and how to implement a chemical management system? Let's look at the question one to understand why we should manage the chemicals. Here we list out three reasons. The first reason is to protect the environment, ensuring it's safe and comfortable for the existing and future generations. There is no doubt that Existing manufacturing operations cannot be sustained. A conscious movement towards use of safer chemicals and sustainable chemistry practice requires everyone's involvement. The second reason is to protect the brands and consumers. These concerns are mainly related to restricted chemicals that may remain as residues in the final products. The third reason is to protect factories and workers. It is important for us to understand the hazards associated with the chemicals used in the manufacturing process. These chemicals can negatively impact the workers' health and the environment. We can take proper risk control measures during the manufacturing process. Now let's go to the second question. What we can benefit from the chemical management? 
The first benefit is to maintaining the basic operating license and competitive advantage. Every facility is granted a license to operate by the local regulatory authority. Flouting the environmental norms stimulated in the license to operate can lead to closure or shutdown by these authorities. And chemical management can help you understand your input chemicals so as to meet the stringent requirement of effluent, air, and sludge discharges outlined in the license. Chemical management can also provide a competitive advantage over your peers. Your buyers want to deal with facilities that can conform to their chemical restriction requirements and who can comply with all regulatory norms. This generates confidence amongst buyers and results in increased chance of business volumes. The second benefit is to help you save costs by minimizing excessive chemical purchases. Introducing elements of chemical management, such as the first in first out system or a chemical clean out of unused or old chemical inventory at regular intervals can help to optimize the chemical demand and improve um, profits. And chemical management also helps to reduce chemical loading onto the influence treatment plants, recorded as ETP in short. Reducing duplication and optimizing exact dosage of use. Choosing chemicals with lower inherent COD and BOD values. And reducing non-productive outputs that go down the drain can ensure lower loads on ETP and the relevant management cost. About the implement, implement of the chemical management, well, in this slide, we list out the main modules of the chemical management system. To introduce all of them in deep, we have a two full days training course. And today we will introduce two important modules in short. They are the hazards and risk assessment and the chemical transfers and storage precautions. In Jane, part two, so, sorry, Jane, just before you continue, are you able to turn your yeah. camera on for me? We can't see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Thank you. <laughs> and um, okay, let's go on. <laughs> In part two, uh, we will introduce the risk assessment of chemicals. Here is a cost of error model. The, the black solid line represents the possibility to correct errors, and the red dotted line represents the cost for correcting errors. From this model, we know that the errors can be corrected easily and lower and with, uh, with lower cost if they can be found as early as possible. It inspires us, us that if we want to control the restricted substance residue in the final product, or control the discharge of hazard chemicals from the factories. The most effective and economical way is to manage the chemical inputs at the design, planning, and production stages. And when we want to manage the chemicals, we need to assess their risk first. In this slide, we will see three basic concepts of chemical risk assessment, the hazard, exposure and risk. Hazard means the potential of a substance to harm humans or the environment. It is an inherent or intrinsic feature independent of usage or other criteria. For example, the hazard of the gasoline is that it is flammable. Exposure is the possibility of coming into contact with a substance and risk is dependent on the exposure to the hazard associated with a substance by the relation. The hazard is the property of chemical. The exposure is the dosage or concentration, and the risk is the impact on the workers' and consumers' health or safety and environment. Risk is the pro pro probability of causing harm. Continuing the example of the gasoline as above, if the gasoline comes in contact with the spark or ignition source, 
it is a very high probability of catching fire and which can harm the surrounding area. So as per concept as, as above, we can conclude a formula that risk is equivalent to hazardous to, to, to hazard multiply the exposure. So if we minimize the exposure to a hazard substance, then we can minimize the associated risk. This is an information slide. The risk of a chemical is mostly evaluated on the basis of the intrinsic hazard in the chemicals. In general, there are 18 hazard endpoints that a chemical or substance need to be passed through before we can declare it to be safe. Combining, combining this information with exposure potential, a risk model can be disposed, can, can be developed. A scientific, a scientific risk assessment of the chemical used in the, at the workplace is extremely important to prevent injuries, accidents, and damage. Simply put, it is a careful examination of what in your work or workplace can cause harm to people and surroundings, and then determine the control measures required to prevent harm. Thus, the intention of a risk assessment exercise is to prevent workplace accidents, work-related health issues, and environmental impact. The outcome is a set of precautions or control measures complied with a written document to prevent any damage. When you are carrying out the chemical, um, chemical risk assessment, several key points you need to consider it. The first point is the intrinsic hazards of the chemicals. This information can be obtained from five sources. The safety data sheet provided by your chemical supplier, the safety label on the chemical container, discussion with your chemical supplier, discussion with a chemical expert from internal or external resource, search on public databases, that have published data on hazards. And then we also need to consider the potential exposures of the chemicals. Once the chemical, when, once the chemical hazards are identified, it is important to quantify the, the exposure to the hazard because we know the formula that risk is equivalent to hazard multiplied exposure. This can be determined by checking the questions as below. Who may be exposed within the workplace to the chemical in inventory? What sort of personal protective equipment that are in place and how are they being used? Is there adequate environmental controls such as venting or containment that are in place? And then we also need to consider the activities giving rise to exposure. This is best done by doing a walkthrough of the facility from the point of entry of the chemicals through storage, usage of process up to and including disposal. Mapping the areas where exposure to an accident potential may exist. These hot spots may have issues like chemical spills, process steps where heat is applied, physical handling by workers or storage conditions like, likely to affect the stability and reactivity of the chemicals. Then you can check which of these hotspots can be eliminated or changed to reduce the exposure. We also need to consider the risks need to be controlled. The quantification of the risk will be directly dependent on the exposure during duration and frequency, as well as the concentration of a chemical involved. For example, potassium permanganate, we call it as PP in short. It is a, it is a general used oxidizer. Spraying of the PP onto gene garments involves the exposure risk of workers to the PP spray through inhalation over the entire eight-hour work shift. Thus, 
the workers should have proper resp respirators and training. The workplace should be provided with an enclosure and local exhaust ventilation to remove the overspray droplets and vapors. In line with our learning that risk is equivalent to hazard multiplied exposure, the risk assessment can be carried out in, in four steps. Step one, hazard identification. This involves determining what health hazards are caused by exposure to a chemical or pollutant. Generally, this information can be gathered from the safety data sheets. Step two, exposure assessment. Here we determine how many people are exposed and for what specific period of time. Continuing the example of the PP spraying as above, the exposure to PP involve three kinds of people. The workers at the PP spray booth are exposed all through the eight-hour shift. The workers near this area are exposed for less than four hours, while the shift supervisor will be exposed only when he goes on his supervision round of the factory. And then step three, thoughts response assessment. This is to identify the roots of exposure, including nasal, eyes, skin, and mouth and the extent of health damage that the chemical can cause due to this exposure. Generally, this information will be available from the safety data sheet too. And step four, risk characterization. Based on the data obtained from the first three steps, a characterization of the risk should be made. Generally, this can be done as high metro or low. Well, in part three, we will introduce another module of the chemical management system, the chemical transferring and storage precautions. As we know, all chemicals can be hazardous depending on the exposure and the concentration. However, chemicals are essential in our lives and business. So we must use them safely to protect our workers, our workplace, and the environment. Safety during chemical transfer, transportation is extremely important. Transportation involves the risk of injury or loss to public, environmental pollution, economic loss, and of chemical image loss, and etc. Let's look at let's look a little more in deep at the transportation of chemicals in each of these three areas, the chemical supplier, factory, and waste facility. The purchased chemicals will be transported to the factory by the chemical supplier. Then the factory will be responsible for receiving and uploading the chemicals. During the manufacturing, the chemicals and waste transports and conveyance may, will be happened internally. In the end, the chemical waste must be collected and dealt with by the licensed waste chemical waste facility. In these three areas, as an apparel or footwear factory, we should focus on the internal transportation of the chemicals and their waste. Here, some basic precaution on transportation of chemical within your facility is listed, is listed. Before we go through these points, please pay attention that any person responsible for transporting chemicals must be trained on the proper handling and emergency spill procedures. The chaining must be occurred at least annually and should be documented. Now let's look at some precautions during the internal transportation of the chemicals. The chemicals transported by forklift truck should be traveled on clearly marked passageways have adequate widths to reduce the possibility of collision and spillage. 
The containers of the flammable liquids should be specially constructed with spring-located caps and flame and flame arrestors in their spout. The transfer of flammable liquids should only be conducted in well vent ventilate ventilated areas with the containers properly earthed and bonded with uh, bonded, bonded by rope. We should avoid shaking hazardous chemicals to prevent leaking due to over fertilization. The leak proof equipment should be used when transporting small amounts of hazard chemicals. Spillage or con contamination accidents um, may, may, may happen during the transport during the transportation. This may be because of insufficient material transport equipment. For example, if the chemicals are transported around the factory using a trolley, the wheels on the trolley must be fully and properly founding to prevent unnecessary slip, spillage or contamination during transport. And also, we need to ensure that the ground surface is smooth. The containers material of construction or chemical transportation need to be looked at carefully to avoid contamination or incompatibilities. Chemical warehouse and storage facilities should be appropriately designed for the chemical they are going to store. Each chemical with its known hazards and reactivities must have its proper storage design safety features. Here are some hints for the design of the chemical warehouse and storage. The design and construction of the chemical warehouse should always consider possible loose sceneries that may affect the employees, the surrounding, the population, the surrounding population, the, the environment, the warehouse building, and the business continuity. The storage should be designed by a project team, knowledge, knowledgeable in the hazard presented by the material stored and considerate in the following required special building features. For example, the specific electrical devices to sustain explosion hazard. The installation of lightning protection system is essential. The ventilation or thermal regulation for having fresh air provisions and ambient dryness. The fire suppression equipment. In this slide, we can see some precautions for the chemical warehouse. <clears throat> storage chemicals by compatible groups in the specialized storage area without direct wall contacts. Put obvious signage as displayed. Place the hazardous chemicals in a secondary container to take care of any spillage. Don't expose them to the direct sunlight. Use specific spoons to handle and transfer the chemicals and to avoid contamination. Now, let's summarize some good practice for the chemical storage. The information provided in the safety data sheets and this kind of safety data sheet should be easily accessible in the chemical uh, warehouse. A good standard operating procedure and checklist for the, for the, for the uh, storage should be available. The ventilation and grounding condition of the warehouse. Separation of incompatible chemicals. Handling spillage and leak containers. Provision to a drain system connected to the effluent treat plants. Fire Well, thank you very much for listening for my uh, listening to my presentation. And now we will go to the Q and A session. Well, may I know if there are any questions? Lovely. Thank you so much, Jane, for that. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that one. And as I mentioned, this is just the beginning uh, part of chemical management system. 
there's still quite a few more to go. So please do keep a look out for the rest of our series in our on chemical management. Right, Jane, we have had a few questions come through. Um, so, and we've only got about three minutes. So those that we can't get through, please don't worry. We will send uh, a response to you directly through email if we don't manage to get to them right now. Right, so the first question that we have is, how can we identify if the chemicals we import are compliant with the buyers or the regulatory chemical restriction requirements for the market? Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, about this question, as we know that um, the buyer's regulatory chemical restriction requirements is generally for the uh, chemical residues on the final product. For the the chemicals, we suggest you can refer to the ZHC MRSL. MRSL represents the Manufacturing Restricted Substance List, and this is a list of chemical instances banded, for, uh, banded from intention, intention use uh, in the facilities. And um, in this MRSL, it lists out the formulation limits for the restricted substance. So uh, you can refer this um, this list and the uh, formulation limit to assess your chemicals risk. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. I hope that answered your question. If you need some more information on that, then just let us know. Thanks, Jane. Right. We do have a couple of other questions come in. So um, somebody's asked if there are any guidelines about a chemicals compatibility. Uh, some guidelines for about what? Chemicals compatibility. So that must be the compatibility with the machine oh, right. or the way that uh, our products are actually produced. Yes, yes. Thank you. And uh, as we as we just mentioned, the the uh, chemicals uh, in com in incompatible incompatible chemicals cannot be store store storage together. So it is important to to identify the the chemicals uh, co uh, compatibility. Now we we prepare a slide for this 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 question this this information, and here you can see. Uh, it is an example of a quick flow chart to, for identify chemicals and storage um, compatibility. Com, uh, <laughs> Sorry, <It's>, uh, yeah, <laughs> compatibility. Yes, um, you can see that um, the 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 acid bases oxidizers uh, cannot be uh, are in compatibility, and uh, this information. Uh, first off, we should identify the 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 in, intrinsic uh, characteristic or the intrinsic features of the chemicals through the safety data sheets. Then you can discuss with the uh, chemical uh, experts internally or externally to check their to, to check their um, compatibility and then design the the storage uh, uh, storage plan. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Right, we do have another couple of questions, but I can see that we're now out of time. We've um, gone past our allotted time. So, what we will do is if, um, if you still have any more questions, please do send them through on the chat function, or if you'd like to send them through to us um, directly on email, we'll be able to answer them uh, for you. Now, as we mentioned, we have recorded this session. So what we will do is make this webinar available to you. Um, once it's done that, we can send you out a copy, but it will also be there on our website as an on demand as well. And like I said, please uh, stay in contact. We'll let you know when we start to do the next round for chemical management and we'll start to look at uh, other requirements as well as well as smart testing. So we do have another a few webinars coming up at the end of this month and also the middle of next month. So we're looking at the safety requirements for EU and US on footwear and apparel. And we're also going through the content labeling again for EU and US. So please do register for those. Um, I will say thank you very much for participating. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you very much, Jane, for presenting for us. That was wonderful. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.